Would you like to be my friend? Oh, I don't want to be your friend, actually. Huh, maybe. My name is Ronnie. Um, if you speak Spanish, um, you are very lucky because a lot of words in Spanish and English are very similar. You can change your accent, drop the O or the A at the end of it, make some hand gestures, and most of the time people will understand you, as long as they're not a little stupid. And this makes learning English for you easier. Yes, but life is not so easy because we have some words that you think they mean something in English, but guess what? Mm, it doesn't translate. Um, probably the most popular example would be embarazada. So in Spanish, you know, embarazada means pregnant. You're going to have a baby. In English, it sounds like the word embarrassed. So if you use the word, people are confused. And you're probably embarrassed too because you've used the wrong word. So in English, we've actually made a term for these. These things are called false friends. And this is the Spanish edition. Stay tuned for the Portuguese edition as well. Um, embarazada means pregnant in Spanish, but in English, it sounds like our English word embarrassed. Embarrassed means you've made a mistake, you've done something stupid, and people have seen you do it, and your face maybe goes a little red, and you're a little ashamed of something. For example, if you're walking down the street and you fall, or you're picking your nose and somebody sees you pick your nose, you feel uncomfortable. You feel embarrassed. Okay, the next one. In Spanish, you say sensibal. Sensibal. <laughs> sensible. <laughs> um, in your language, it means sensitive. By the way, guys, I'm not a Spanish speaker, so I'm going to make mistakes with your language. I'm sorry. Um, bear with. So, in your language, it means sensitive. Sensitive in English means that you are aware of other people's emotions. Or the other meaning is that you cry very easily or that you get angry very quickly. So, if I say that you are sensitive, for example, if I say, oh, I don't like your shoes. If you are a sensitive person, <laughs> you are upset. But in English, sensible kind of means the opposite. Sensible means that you're reasonable in your brain or you can make sense of something. So for example, if I said to you, I don't like your shoes, and you say, oh, I don't care. They're not your shoes, Ronnie. So you're being reasonable or you're being sensible to my comment. Okay, false friends, they're a doozy. Um, the next one we have is carpeta. So in Spanish, carpeta is a folder. It's like a thick paper where you can put other documents in and, and keep it safe, keep it out of danger so you don't spill some tequila on it. Um, but in English, it sounds like carpet. So a carpet is something that covers your floor. We use carpets a lot because our floors are very cold in Canada. Um, most houses, I think, for example, in Mexico, you guys don't have a carpet. It's too hot. You have tile floor. But a carpet is a floor covering made of fabric, not a folder. Okay. The next one, compromiso. Compromiso in your language means an obligation. Obligation means you have to do something or you must do something. For example, when you come to Canada through the airport, you must show the airport security your passport. Um, it's an obligation to do it. In English, it sounds like the word compromise. Compromise in English means you have reached an agreement. So for example, you want to go and see a horror movie, 
your friend wants to go and see a romantic comedy movie, <gasps> you disagree, have a little discussion about it, horror movie, blah, blah. and then at the end you go, do you know what? As a compromise or as an agreement, we'll go see a comedy movie because we both like comedy movies. So you've reached an agreement or you've reached a compromise. Um, contestar in your language means to answer. So you can answer a question. Uh, a teacher will ask you a question and you will contestar. You will answer the question, hopefully correctly. Come on, get it right. But in English, it sounds like the word contest. And contest is like a competition. A competition or a contest means that there is one person and some other people. They are doing the same thing or similar thing. They're trying to win a prize. So, for example, you can have a running contest where everyone's running and you try and be the first one. Or you can have a spaghetti eating contest. You have to eat the most spaghetti. Gluttonous, really. I don't really like those contests. You probably have contests at your school. We have talent contests. Those are popular now on TV. Oh, God. Will that be over yet? Nobody's got talent. And impresa. In your language, it means a company or a business. Um, just to confuse you, some people, if you thought about this, we have the word in English, enterprise. So enterprise we get from you guys. Thanks. Thanks for giving us our language, by the way. Um, impresa, we can understand as enterprise to mean a business, but it actually sounds like the verb to impress someone. Uh, maybe you've heard about something called a first impression, but if you impress someone, it means that you make them like you. So, Let's say that you, there's a boy or a girl that you like and you want to impress them. Maybe you give them flowers or you talk to them or hee hee hee, you laugh at their jokes. You're impressing the person to make someone like you or at least not want to kill you or hate you. Huh. Good luck with that as well. People are just awful. Um, this is one of my favorites. I used to say this when I was a child. Groceria. Mm -hmm. um, in your language, it's a store to buy food. We again steal this word and we say we can say a grocery store, but if you use the word groceria, we think it's very similar to our English word gross. Oh my god, that's disgusting. Gross. It's not a store to buy food. It means that something is disgusting or you hate it, you do not like it. So, if you're somewhere and somebody is picking their nose, you might go, oh my God, that's disgusting. That person is picking their nose. So disgusting means something you do not like. It's not a store at all. Um, this is fun, this is fun. So maybe you say, oh, uh, for lunch today, my I ate some sopa. Mm. And you, you know that in your language that means soup. And you think, oh, it was delicious. And your friend is kind of worried and thinking that maybe you are eating soap. So your friend says, what flavor soap did you eat today? And you say, oh, mole or chicken. Or maybe I had some albondigas soap. And your friend is further confused because in English, soap is what we use to wash our bodies. And we don't eat that. Nobody eats that. Even if you're starving, you'd probably eat an insect or a cucaracha or something. Not Definitely not soap, something we use to wash with. Um, so, sopa isn't soup in English. Okay, be careful. When you eat when you wash your body with. I don't even think you could wash your body with, with soup unless you really like chicken noodle smell. Hmm. No, 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 no. Um, a really fun one, ooh, fun, this is fun, yeah, look at this, is tuna. Tuna, you guys know, is a fruit. 
delicious. It's a cactus fruit, grows on a cactus. Um, but for us, it's a stinky old fish. Um, a cactus fruit and a fish are very different. We usually get canned tuna. Um, so if you say, oh, I really like, um, <laughs> I really like tuna, people think, but you told me you don't like fish, Ronnie. You're a vegetarian. What are you doing? And actually, as always, I spelled cactus wrong. So a cactus fruit in your language is very different from what we call tuna. Do you like tuna? The fish, the fish, the fish. Um, cactus fruit is not a very common food in Canada or in the northern part of America, the northern states, but I'm sure in the southern part of the states it grows. <laughs> I don't know. We definitely don't have it here naturally growing. And one of the last ones is ropa. So you guys know that ropa means clothes, things that you wear. Nope. In English, it sounds like the word rope. Yeah. So if you're a cowboy living on a ranch, you are going to use a rope or a lasso. Lasso? Yeah. Does that sound closer to your language? So in English, a rope is like a lasso. It's something you use to tie things together or they use on ships to secure the ship. It is definitely not something that you wear. Well, maybe you can start a new fashion. Maybe you can make rope ropas. That'd be cool. You can make some money, confuse your friends. But damn, you! I know it would be itchy, wouldn't it? To have clothes made out of a rope. No, sorry, not a good idea. Hey, you're going to have to get your business advice someplace else. I can teach you about stuff in English, but business? Can't do it. I hope you guys have fun and good luck with English.